what I didn't realize was so much of what I expected out of you sexually came from an unhealed place. The obvious of, you know, the porn. And that was like coming up on a year of being porn free. While things were different, things still weren't in a fully healthy place Mm -hmm. sexually. I have this viewpoint of everything sexual being sinful because that's the life that I lived before. And everything that is around surrounding sex and about sex is actually about you, not about me. I'm not allowed to be engaged and desiring. I'm just supposed to be there serving you. Now, who told you that? Welcome to the Godbolt Life Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Godbolt, with my beautiful wife, Jade Godbolt. We believe that marriage God's way is the most powerful catalyst towards healing and holiness for you and everybody after you. This has really felt very, um, I think I said this before, but it continues to stand out to me. Like this is just, it's felt very intimate. Oftentimes, these really are conversations that we're having, just landing in a bed. And <laughs> speaking of conversations <laughs> that we've had laying in the bed and we talked about like, or we asked what we were going to talk about, or you asked me and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, really continuing to show how led all of this truly is, but something that literally just hit me to talk about that we have not talked about sex and and not just sex but intimacy um and where we came from to where we are you know where you should start where should i start the sex fast <gasps> oh that's crazy yeah Okay, so check this out. I'm coming up on two years porn free. I wish I had. Yes. Can I just get a crowd? Yes. Cheers. Hand clap. All the, yes. Uh, The screams, all of it. Yeah, yeah. Like, did y'all hear what this man just said? Two years. Like, porn free. Crazy corn free, depending on <laughs> she said where crazy. we're going. Well, yeah. I mean, but this is very much so like this is about marriage. So, I like, know, but sometimes no the kids. platforms be pulling content down because you say certain words, and that's one of them. For real, I ain't yes. never seen them pull no content. I have seen, the P-word. I have seen people use alternative words like corn, <laughs> just in case. So mm, okay, well, two years corn free. Nah, that's a lie. <laughs> that is a lie. Love me some corn, okay? <laughs> um, it's been a journey. It's been a a, a really um, amazing journey. This was last year. It was right before we had MJ. So Christ was very he was he was very intentional in telling us that we needed to unlearn that we needed to you know format the sd card we needed to forget what we thought we knew and then not just forgetting but then you have to repent what i didn't realize was so much of what i expected out of you sexually came from an unhealed place um so it's like the obvious of you know the porn and that was like coming up on a year of being porn free while things were different things still weren't in a fully healthy place Mm -hmm. sexually because now that that was finally gone now it needs to be cleaned now there needs to be repentance for when it wasn't clean because it was never intended to be defiled so one day, you know, I'm driving some from somewhere and I'm convicted to abstaining from sex. And I knew it wasn't for me because that's the last thing 
that I would want to do or wanted to do. But at first I was like, ah, this can't be me. I mean, this is crazy. So I asked for confirmation. Then I shared with you what came to me. And I don't, I don't own my body. I'm married. So I had to make sure that that was okay with you. And you signed off on it. And so it began. And I didn't know what to expect. One of the confirmations I got during that season was that I, for years, for at this point, since I was nine years old, counting when I started to ejaculate that I had not had sex. It had just always been a part of me, um, seemingly. So even though we went through the six months of our premarital counseling, no sex, I was watching porn. So this was like, unbeknownst to me, the the first time in over 20 years that I'd gone a significant amount of time without ejaculating. So what a time that was. And one of the big things that came out of that was what intimacy truly is. Even though this is year two of marriage, it still felt very much so like a renewing of our intimacy in a very like non-traditional way. Because I can't, I mean, I, I'm sure, I'm sure this has happened before. Uh, I've never heard of it, but that's where we started. So what say ye to that? <laughs> <laughs> but what say ye? What say ye to that? How was that for you? Like, you know, it, we've, we honestly, we we didn't talk about this as much as I thought we would even afterwards, just because we kind of just, you know, went into things and then we had a newborn. So there's a lot going on, but Mm -hmm. now that the dust has settled and that we've also been able to see results. Yeah. Yeah. I think that when you initially brought it to me, I was shocked because I was like, wait, what? This definitely can't be him because he would never. <laughs> I have to fight you, you off like both days. That. He would never. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, I'm eight months pregnant. So I wasn't necessarily mad about it because I was like, we got two toddlers. I'm pregnant. I'm good not being touched on for a little bit, you know, and some women are different. Some women get super in the mood when they're pregnant and just like love it. I have been the opposite with every pregnancy, like all three of them. I have not been very much so like wanting to have sex, but I do because that's part of our marriage and our way of being intimacy, intimate with one another. And so. And God loves it. And God loves when we have sex in our marriage. Yes. And so I actually had gone, been going through my own, and you know this, but I'm sharing it with them. And I may, may have touched on this before in previous episodes. I can't remember, but I also felt like I had to go through a season of not feeling like I had to have sex with you, but wanting to. Because that wasn't the case for a long time. Ever since, you know, you admitted to cheating on me before we got married, we were intimate then. So it was like we were boyfriend and girlfriend, but like you cheated on me. So I felt types of ways about that, right? But it was all in sin. So it's like, what sin is better than the other, you know, or worse than the other? You having sex with other women or you having sex with sex with me? Either way, you weren't married. So... I was just in that, had my own set of issues and sin attached and and pain and hurt and all that kind of stuff, right? And we've talked a lot about that. But what I wanted to get to was even with me, you know, lost my virginity when I was 17. So I was out here too and didn't see anything wrong with premarital sex for the longest time. And Same. And really didn't understand why certain people kept themselves pure. And if you did, I thought you were lame. Like, you know, I was that person as well. And so coming out of all of that 
and now being in a marriage and trying to seek after holiness in our bedroom, it wasn't clicking for me. And so a lot of it was like, okay, I actually have to like get myself ready to actually do this because I have this viewpoint of everything sexual being sinful because that's the life that I lived before. And everything that is around surrounding sex and about sex is actually about you, not about me. I'm not allowed to be engaged and desiring. I'm just supposed to be there serving you. Now, who told you that? There's a lot of <laughs> a lot of sources, okay, from just people's <laughs> so perspectives, and uh, that's that's not where I want to go. But, but that's, no, no, but that's important to note, though, because I also feel like prior to one of the things we hadn't fully gotten to all the results yet, but this is a great place to to start them because we weren't talking about these things. No, prior to no, it was kind of just like. Well, you're married, so now you can, mm -hmm. so do it. Right. And there's But everybody all knew other... that we were before we were married because no, no, no. we had a child. So no, 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 yes. But it's one of those things to where it's finally okay. Yes. Like yeah. there is a level of freedom attached to it that like, okay, now there is no longer this like stigma. Uh, yeah. I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing, but it hurts so good type vibes. Yeah. So we don't realize, even in that, how much we're still bringing in because, like, that's not the way I would have you. But if that's the way you've already accepted in your mind without me, then without us even talking about that or you sharing that, then it's – I can't speak truth to that lie because I don't even know the lies there. Yeah. And a lot of that even, too, is spending time – in prayer about it, talking to other women about it, other wives about it, because it's not just a lie that you can speak truth to if I tell you. I don't even believe that it is a lie in my mind for the longest time. Like I was operating as if it was the truth because I genuinely believed that if I was to operate in me desiring X, Y, and Z in the bedroom, that made me a hoe. So, okay, okay, okay. So that's where I was pulling from was like in my past when I was more aggressive, when I was more forthcoming with men about this or that in that realm, I – part of that was something operating in me that wasn't me. Part of that promiscuity was not me. But now that we're on the other side of it, back then – I could not allow myself to even have a conversation with what does Jade like and what does Jade want to do. And to be quite honest, I'm still kind of in that place, but not as intense as it was then. But that break allowed me the space to confront the lie of that and also – heal and believe that I wasn't who I was before and that those experiences did taint my ability to operate in our intimacy in our marriage. But that being what it is, I was finally in a place where I could repent clearly about it. And because the other part of this was if I wasn't feeling shame about my past, I was feeling anxiety about showing up for you. It was either or. And then you blanket having babies back to back over all of it. So if it wasn't those two things, it was physically I just wasn't into it. So it was it, pick your poison in the whole scenario. But it was always something blocking me from being able to fully be engaged. And I think that genuinely – Y'all as men don't mean to not be considerate because you just cannot understand. But for women in childbearing years where we are having babies, breastfeeding, pregnant, our bodies are going through all these changes. And for me to have that experience back to back three times, 
it shocked my whole system. So not only am I getting a, literally a brain rewire every time I have a baby, because that's what happens. It's like software update. There's another person that needs you to be their mommy on the planet. Yeah, software it's, update. Yes, mm, but. You're created to do it. Right. No, <laughs> but it changes you is my point. Yeah. So as I'm learning this new version of myself after each baby, I don't, there's not a lot of time between those times. So I say that to say that. When it comes to being intimate with you and feeling like I'm desirable and attractive, that's actually a task on my mind that I have to do that when I'm by myself, because I'm trying to get myself ready and like make sure I'm prepared and make sure I'm feeling good and in the mood – I have anxiety. So I started to feel so much anxiety every single night we would go to bed because I'm wondering, okay, he's going to want to have sex tonight and I really don't want to, but I know I'm supposed to. And God told me literally the only way that it gets better is if I do it. Because if I avoid, then I'm in disobedience because sex is part of marriage and I am not supposed to deny you deny myself that experience. So it's one of those things where I had to push through my fear, which was a lie. I had to push through the anxieties, which were also real feelings, but predicated on lies of not being worthy, of not being enough, of not being able to satisfy, of of whatever all the other stuff was. But as I began in that season, actually, to start running back, and saying in my mind, in my spirit, in my prayer life, like, okay, Lord, I had been praying over my body to like desire you in that way. Like, I'm like, Lord, help me want to have sex with my husband, <laughs> like very flat out plainly. And that's the prayer that I would say a lot of nights. And that fast came at a time when for me, it was relief because. I thought I don't have to fight through that anxiety every night anymore. I can actually breathe. And because that anxiety was removed, I was able to actually see these lies, these these fears for what they were so that, like I said, that I could repent so that I could let go of the shame so I could give everything to God and actually have a sense of freedom and clear slate in our marriage. And This is year two of our marriage, but it didn't matter when or how it happened. God desired it to happen then. So I was ready for it. But honestly, I think in the beginning, you thought that it was for me because I was about to have the baby and like we wouldn't be able to have sex for the first six, eight weeks anyway. So like, I think whenever you first told me it, you Definitely weren't sure as to why we were doing it, but you definitely leaned on it being more about me. But I don't think that at that time you could have understood the depth of why it was for me, but also why it was for you too. And I think like that's the beautiful part of the fast was it was just as much for you as it was for me in totally different ways that we did not understand when we first got the word to do it at all. But after the fact, it was like, okay, this made sense. Like God did something in us within this time period where we abstained. And I mean, granted, we were going to abstain for a a large chunk of that time anyway because we were having a baby. Six weeks and three months is very different. But, you know, that's six (laughs) weeks is a chunk of three months when you really think about it. It's like 30 percent. Okay. So there's a whole other 70 that you said. Okay. (laughs) I'm just trying to focus on the positive, okay? Anyway, what I am saying is I also believe that part of the – fruitfulness of that fast. And you tell me if I'm wrong or off, but I really believe that our ability to be on one page with that, not compromise our emotional intimacy, we actually got 
heavier on the emotional intimacy side because we weren't physically intimate. So we talked a lot more. We already talk a lot, child. But we talked a lot more. We still found ways to touch on each other, whether that be massages or just hugging, kisses, stuff like that, where we were still physically embracing one another. And yet, spiritually, we were very in tune with one another and with God. And then we have this incredible home birth with just you and me, where we literally gave birth to our son in the middle of our living room with no one else there except our two other babies sleep in the room and our dog and the fireplace going, worship music going. And you literally delivered our son with no other guide but the Holy Spirit. His cord was wrapped around his neck. And you were so spiritually in tune that you handled the entire thing so calmly, so peacefully, yet so exactly how it was supposed to go. You knew exactly what to do. You've never done that before by yourself, but yet from the video clip that I saw and from living it with you, it's like God was operating through you. God, the Holy Spirit was our midwife working through your hands, working through you. And I'm not saying that without the Mm -hmm. past, we couldn't have done that. But I think us just being spiritually heightened just established something powerful in our household during that season. Yeah, like that was huge, being spiritually in a place to where like I could hear clearly Mm -hmm. and had already been trained to obey and have faith. So it's like on the journey, he knew that this was going to be a part of the journey. I didn't, but he clearly knew. Going back to, you know, everything physical, having a spiritual root. And sometimes we can look at things, the physical thing, and not be able to see the spiritual thing. And everything that God created can be twisted, hence witchcraft or sorcery. So even something as beautiful as marriage and as sex and as child rearing and whatever else, like I can use a stone to throw someone to kill them. I can also use a stone to cook food on, to write on, all of those things, right? So as good as sex is, and God created sex in Eden, so it was perfect. It had been twisted for us. And it wasn't just a matter of we snap our fingers and it's no longer twisted. This was more so a very spiritual thing. And because we bought bought into that, because I bought into that nothing wavering, it wasn't a, you know, well, well you know, God didn't really say do this or um, I'm having second thoughts about this. It was like, no, we're going to do this. And I'm not going to do this like, oh, can't have sex. What was me? Or, oh, I can't have sex. Let me go back to porn because I have to feel this. It was like, no, I want to obey. And bigger than that, what is my word to my family if it can't be that? Mm-hmm. So, And leaning on him. Well, Not going on him. to <clears throat> sex with me or, or porn or whatever as a means to release anything or relieve yeah, yeah. anything going to him and denying your flesh even temporarily built up faith built up endurance to persevere and i think that there's so many men that can hear this and be like ain't no way i could do that ain't no way oh well like that was me at a point but During this season, also, there was just a heightened um, call to obedience where not that I was being asked to obey more, but it was like a lot of things that I had based who I my identity on. So it was my image. It was how many women I've been with all of these things that that's now being 
pulled down so that they can be built up the way he intended. And in so many things, repentance is to turn. So what does that look like sexually? Mm -hmm. To turn from what I thought that was. So no matter who you are, it, 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 as it pertains to any addiction that you're in, there has to be a stopping point, a healing point, a purge before you can go back to life as normal or as usual or as a new normal for you. This was no different. And because of that obedience and because of of the importance of how you obey as well, because, yeah, I could have, you know, felt sweat the whole time, but we embraced it. Well, and then we can keep going. The level of intimacy that we reached because we got to understand each other more. We got to experience each other in a very fresh and different way because, I mean, we've been sexually active since very early on in our relationship. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, like I said, six months premarital, which I was still watching porn. And it's like this was our clean foundation. This was our results of being cleansed with the living water mm -hmm. that we got a chance to experience. And what's been built on top of that has been literally from him. Even y'all, there were times before this that we tried bringing things in our bedroom, you know, different lubricants and stuff. We had a little whip. I don't think we ever used it, but we had one. <laughs> um, vibrated. Like, it just like, didn't right. work, though. It just wasn't our vibe. And I think that, you know, some may disagree with this, but sex God's way doesn't require anything sex, outside of Outside of people. what he's given us. Yes. That's 1,000%. Unless you have a medical condition or something. 1,000%. <laughs> like, it really doesn't. And, and but... It, it's the result of saying, I want to serve you. And it's hard to serve, truly serve somebody with a pure heart and serve self. Those two things cannot happen at the same time. So going back to our early um, part of the season where we talked about two wheels battling at the same time and the tension that it creates and that and even now applying that to our intimate life, that's what was going on. God wants me to serve my wife even in this way, and I want to make sure I get mine. And those two things are a tension that, you know, maybe I felt that I was the only one feeling that tension, but you were feeling that tension in a different way. Mm -hmm. And something had to give. And me letting go of mine didn't mean that now I just know how to walk in this thing. Mm -hmm. I had to learn that. And learn to lead in that way to where, babe, if I have to stop for a season so that I can relearn this thing, so that I can serve you the way he desires for me to serve you, then that's worth it for our forever. I have forever to be intimate with you in the way that he's called me to. But if I can't stop to learn, what does that say about my reason? What does it say about whether or not I actually love you? For you to feel like you have a choice. Do you feel like you have a choice now? Mm -hmm. Like that, that's without that season. It, I mean, whether we want to go to the birth, whether we want to go to just where we are now and the way that we, we view intimacy now and the package that it is and what that really means to serve your spouse in that way, all of that is elevated. I was talking to some of my my friends. I'm like, man, like, you know, married people, really righteously married people don't talk about how amazing sex is the way he created it to be because it goes beyond the physical. Mm -hmm. It actually makes the physical much smaller than what it's positioned to us as. Like we're, we're, we are fed that it is physical. Mm -hmm. It it's physical. So if it if it's not a look, if it's not a place, if it's not, then it ain't it. And once we cleaned out that area of our lives, 
it's better than I could have ever imagined it to be. And I remember hearing people that were married longer say like, oh, you know, the longer you're married, the sex gets better and blah. And so I would be like, okay, well, so I could, I got to wait 10 plus years before we can have <laughs> good sex. Okay, all righty then. Well, I guess Paul will be my friend until we get to that point. You know, maybe <laughs> she'll watch with me and learn some stuff. I, I mean, it, it's just, it's so false because it comes down to, well, are you ready to change? Mm-hmm. Are you ready to give up what you thought you knew? Are you ready to repent? Because if you are, this can be cut very short. It doesn't have to be that. Yeah. And we learned, we've learned through many experiences, including this one, that like, you know, now year three, I'm like, yeah, as many, as much as I used to talk about the bodies I have and the caliber of women, all of these things, like the intimacy that we share is head and shoulders above anything that I've ever experienced. And I'm not just saying that because you're my wife. Like, I mean that with everything in me. And that comes from us tapping into the spiritual implications that our creator, our father, loving kindness created that with. We've been able to tap into that. And it's incredible. Yeah, it really is. And I think that It's a gift to be able to start fresh even after being married already and knowing that that is possible. It's happened for us. So Redemption. If you're, yeah. Any, it can all be redeemed. Yeah. He's a redeemer. And so if you're you know, in a space in your marriage where things aren't really rocking the way you want them to rock, you know, it can be redeemed, but it starts with a humbling. It starts with the realization of why do I have the tastes that I have? What is feeding the taste? What is keeping the taste alive? And y'all, during this time, like I'll speak for me because it was also crazy that the Holy Spirit put me on this, put us on this journey, but through me while in, you know, the first year after no porn because even to get to that point there were exercises there was structure and discipline that i had to follow through this process so like there's certain shows i couldn't watch and certain things i couldn't listen to and 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 even getting off of social media and blocking certain things and just all of these that different was, yeah that was definitely part of the yeah process. Like, that was more like, of the beginning of it though and yeah. people think that that is it like as long as you can block the things and not oh, watch, no. they think it, yeah. that that's enough. But that's actually just the beginning because you literally cannot control your flesh. Uh-huh. So yeah. you need to remove the things that you can't fight against for a time or forever, whatever you're led to do. But that's just the beginning of the journey of coming out of that. Habit. I want to say flesh. I, I would say more so the spiritual covenants that I. Like the pleasures that I I'd grown to be comfortable with throughout the process of my life, like stuff that I've been presented and then bought into, um, in in my trauma and all of those things, but all of that helped to walk this thing out, and the results were, you know, what the results were, and. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's like, do you really want to be healed? You know, for everybody, it's going to be different. Um, it may not be as long of a fast. It, I mean, a, a abstination and maybe whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But being in a position to love the Father more than you love your own pleasures and trusting that and being obedient to him, he knows Better. He knows the outcome. He knows the favorite outcome was best for me. And even if it don't make sense, because I was instructed to not share with everyone. So I had, you know, my small community that knew what we were doing to like stay in prayer for us and just help me to remain accountable and all those things. But it was one of the best decisions ever. And on this journey, it's like, when you look at some of those pillars that has helped us to grow into this marriage, 
honestly, it's crazy because prior to this conversation, prior to it, it's been a while since I thought about that because I've gotten so comfortable in our new norm. Yeah. Um. So, so I'm like, too. wow, I forgot that we actually did that. Like, whoa. And it wasn't that long ago. And it wasn't that long ago. But we did know that even back then, like, God is doing a work in us. So eventually it'll be time for us to share, you know, what happened, how it happened, the testi- testimony of it all. And I think the time was now. Clearly, because you asked me what to talk about. And obviously I was like, I, I don't know. We're just going to be led as we've been and see what happens. And then sure enough, I sat down and I forgot, I forgot even how, what you said, but it was like, pow, sex came out of nowhere. And for us, our journey is very um i would say it's unorthodox but maybe not maybe it's just that we're sharing maybe more people have you know dealt with this and tried this or 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 been told to do this and maybe you haven't and you or maybe you've been told to and this is confirmation um that it works but christ did not emphasize the importance of the unlearning, the importance of being born again for no reason. And sometimes we can kind of, you know, glimpse over the born again part. He could have, you know, used so many different different analogies or different ways to say it, but I believe that he said born again to include all of us. And sex was one of those things that I built my persona on. And that was the epitome of me tearing it down so that it could be rebuilt on his character, on his love, on the foundation of him. And it's continuing to grow fruit. It's amazing to not have to have the plan and to be in the position of just implementing because, you know, that when he's created the plan, it was created already knowing what you were capable of. So to not, you know, have to first do the plan and then carry out the plan. It's like he really does like lead us, y'all, in all things. And it's weird to some people. Some people, you know, see it and they they, they can't imagine it. <laughs> we used to either driving from the driver's seat or driving from the passenger seat. <laughs> One or the other. As if we don't have the option of just being a passenger and enjoying the scenery, enjoying the experience of being with our father. And anytime we do something like this, which is totally outside of ourselves, we turn it over to him. I mean, we turn everything over to him, but especially stuff like this. And it's tell some of my homies even now that like, yo, some, some of the stuff that happens through us, I'm just as like excited and experiencing it like everybody else, because it's truly like, I ain't driving. And I I'm just did not make this up. And I didn't make this up and I didn't choose this. This ain't my plan. I'm just being obedient and using what he's put in us, going back to the show before, going off of what he created us, not being anything different, but just, okay, God, you put me here. So you put me here to be Mark, you put me here to be Jade. And that's what I'm going to focus on, not The plan, not the location that you're dropping me, but like, imagine if someone dropped the care package and then the care package was like, "Eh, I don't want to care here. I'm going (laughs) to stay in this box. I'm not going to work for them. I'll wait until there's somebody else. It's like, no, care packages are dropped with what's in them being conducive to where they are. So just be you. If you're ointment, be ointment. If you're, you know, love, be love. And that's all we got to do. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the God Bolt Life podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us a DM or leave us a review wherever you're listening. We really appreciate having you with us on this journey.